Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina. Welcome to my channel Lifting Pins and Needles. Today I want to show you a French pattern. Now in March I joined a new Facebook group. It's quite a big group, over 5,000 members there called Sew Alongs and, and Contests. And every month they hold a, a sewing challenge within the group with prizes and I find the group is super motivating. There's loads of feedback when you're posting your progress. So I've been having a lot of fun in that group. Um, I'm going to link that group down below if you want to join, you can request to join there. So uh, the theme for March was breaking ground. That meant that you needed to sew something from a pattern company you'd never tried before, whether it be indie, commercial, from a magazine, some, it had to be something totally new for you. So I decided to go French. Now for a while <laughs> I've been thinking that as seamstresses as we become more confident, and, and happy with the skills that we have, the way that you know we prefer to construct garments. I think we should broaden our horizons and seek other alternatives and challenge ourselves and challenge our minds. So I don't speak French. I do speak English, Portuguese and Spanish and that gives me a good mix to understand some words in French, although I don't you know read or speak, you know. Um, but yeah, I decided to go for it. Uh, the pattern company is Republic du Chiffon, and I already like the name of the pattern company, you know, Republic of Chiffon. You know, <laughs> who doesn't want to live there <laughs> full of chiffon, you know? And um, the pattern is the Paula top. Now, it was a gamble to see whether this top was going to suit me. Uh, I'll put some pictures here. It's a very simple top with grown on sleeves, very boxy with a tie on the front. Um, the pictures there of the model on the website um, are very different to me, you know, to my body type. So I wasn't sure how or if that tie at the front was going to suit me because I have a larger bust, a C cup, and I try to not bring attention to that area. But I took the risk, you know, took the risk. Now European sizing, usually these pattern companies don't have a broad range of sizes and uh, Republic du Chiffon have sizes 34 to 46 European and that is a 30 and a half inch to 41 inch bust and hip of 34 inches to 43 and a third inches. Now I had to convert these because the information you find that is all in centimeters, which for me is awesome. You know, I like centimeters, but I just wanted to give you the equivalent. So there was no finished garment measurement stated, but as I saw, the pattern uh, looks like has a, you know a lot of ease. It looks quite boxy, but according to the measurements, I cut out my size 46, which is the largest size there. They recommend light to medium weight wovens. You know, rayon, chambray, linen, that sort of thing, even silk. <laughs> <laughs> I chose black chiffon because you know just to, to honor the name of the pattern company and in the little process video what you're going to see is me dealing with the lack of seam allowance which I always find is a positive thing um, the layout what I did to get mine out of smaller amounts of fabric <laughs> some thinning adjustments and how I finished the arm side uh, with bias binding now I did I did construct the garment totally different to what they said so um, let's hop into that. I'm going to show you a little bit. You can see how self-explanatory these diagrams are. There are just shoulder seams and side seams there. And you can see that the armhole is just a little bit angled up there. No sleeve to sit in. And you can see how the ties belong to the front pattern piece. Now, um, they have you do the same on the main fabric and the lining. Um, on the lining, they have you leave an opening on one of the side seams because they want you to like bag out the thing so you can see that if you put your lining and your main right sides together they're both identical you sew all the way around like the hem the ties everything and then you bag it around and take it out through the hole in the side seam but i'm not doing that i'm doing mine single layered and i'm finishing everything with bias binding that's what i've chosen the diagrams are good i don't really need to know that much french I have the two pattern pieces needed for the Paula top. Uh, this is the front, that is the tie that's going to tie up sort of at the neckline and this is the back and now I'm going to show you up close some of the stuff I've scribbled onto the pattern pieces. Now this is the back and there it says pli which means fold. I've looked all this up on Google Translate. <laughs> Hot is back. 
um, Tissou is fabric, the bleu is lining. I am not going to use lining for this blouse and that will change drastically my construction method and it's going to be sort of easier for me. Now um, this does not have seam allowances and that's great because I've added the seam allowances that I want for my construction method. So at the necklines I haven't added any seam allowance because I'm going to finish with bias binding right on that edge so I don't need seam allowance. For the shoulders, I have left myself a 3 8 seam allowance. To finish this sort of short little opening for the sleeve, I've just might left myself a quarter inch seam allowance because I'm going to finish that with bias binding. And the first fold of the single fold bias tape that I make has that width. So I can just line up to the raw edges there. Now for the side seams, because I don't know the fit, I've never tried this pattern, I, I don't even know what the finished garment measurements are. I have left myself a bit more seam allowance, 5 eighths, just in case. I... Now for the hem, I've given myself a bit extra length. I just think it looks a bit short, so one and a half inches extra. Now for the front, I've left myself the same seam allowances for the side seams, the shoulders, the opening for the arms. And all this neckline and all of this tie thing, this also has no seam allowance. So um, this is like a middle, but it, it finishes loose. It's not sewn in the middle. So I don't need seam allowance because I'm not doing a lining. If I were to line this, I would have to add myself seam allowance everywhere. But you understand what I'm talking about later. Now here, the vans means front. <laughs> This is my layout, that is the fold, it says plea there, so I put my back there on the fold and on the other side is the selvage, now I've got my front piece right up to the selvage and the tie comes right up to there and I've had to shorten my tie by like half a centimeter, it won't affect anything and from all that area over there I've got to make a lot of bias binding. Now I've already sewn the shoulder seams but I tried it on and it was very loose around the bust and the waist so I've drawn a new side seam and I'm going to take it in on both sides. I'm also going to shorten that little bit there of the sleeve. I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish this armhole. Um, it, it's not shaped like a normal arm side, it's more just like a straight sleeve coming out of the side seam there. So from the side seam it's just basically straight up like that so um, I have pinned my bias binding there uh, right sides together I'm gonna use the first fold of the bias tape to sew on and I'm gonna close up so you can see this intersection right there this is the intersection I've been talking about that I've got with pins as you can see the side seam is there pressed open I don't want to sew over that so I'm gonna flip that to one side flip everything to one side and I need to put my needle right at that point. That's where I start sewing on the bias tape. And then I go all the way around the armhole, um, you know, at that quarter inch seam allowance where that first fold of my bias tape is. When I get to the other side, or to finish, I have to flip that that way so I don't catch it. I want it to be free, that seam allowance there for the side seams and I need to end precisely at that spot right there. So um, that is what you're seeing now, very close up shot. Uh, this is the slowest part, I do a bit of hand wheeling at the start and then I can just whiz through the whole armhole. Um, you know, as you can see, it happens in two seconds. I'm following my press line from the bias tape and then when I get to the end, you can see my mark there of my pin. I'm flipping that seam allowance to the other side. I don't want to sew over it. And here I'm going to hand wheel the last couple of stitches to make sure I'm precise and I'm not back stitching. I am leaving the threads loose so I can pull it through the other side and do it uh, a hand knot so it's more delicate. So that's where I finish there. Here you can see I flip the bias tape around and those two flappy bits there, I have united them there with a pin. Now I'm going to open that so you can see. I need to sew that up to that same point intersection right there, but it's too fiddly to do it by machine, so I'm just going to st stitch it by hand. It's a very, very short area, 
and here you can see it's been magically hand sewn and I've trimmed the other one that was a bit longer so now that area has been um, closed together and everything's gonna be nice neat and closed right there so now this gets really fiddly my fabric choice of course makes it harder but um, basically you need to fold that under like that <laughs> Um, and then fold your bias tape on the fold line there and then you sew around there you have a few pivot points to sew here you can see it's magically all been pinned ready to sew and you can see that area there where I'm going to need to pivot that's the area I just hand stitched and this is the most delicate area of this part of the construction of the garment really just because I've chosen to do it that way so you can see me stitching on the bias tape. Now I am sewing on my wrong side of the fabric just so I can have more preci precision with the bias tape. Here you can see me taking out pins almost as I'm almost on top of them. I get to this point there uh, where I have to pivot. So I just leave my needle there. I take out all these pins because they're gonna bother me. Um, and then um, with my seam ripper, I'm going to help myself to keep these areas flat there while I sew they do want to shift around and move I could have hand basted this down but I just didn't feel like doing that today I will do it for a more precise result but I think I can manage the fabric okay uh, it does shift and slide everywhere um, then you have that other pivot point there um, where you raise your, th your thing put it back down and then once you're past this then it's just straight sewing basically just keep going now you see me throw pins around everywhere uh, as I sew I'm just like flipping them <laughs> where they go that's how my table looks after I'm done there's just pins everywhere I pick them up <laughs> okay so you must think I'm crazy why did I do all that well two reasons if I would have lined it and did it you know in a double layer and backed it out it was very simple I mean the the diagrams on the instructions were super super clear and super simple and it would have probably taken me less time than making yards and yards and yards of bias tape and going through all that trouble <laughs> but first I didn't have that much black chiffon to cut two pieces or like out of everything and the other reason, I don't need that extra layer. I don't want two layers of stuff on me. I am hot, it is hot. I just want a loose thing that feels like I'm wearing absolutely nothing, but gives it something extra to my wardrobe. So those are the reasons, and that's why I did it like that. Now about the lack of seam allowance, I don't, I am not kidding you. I jump up and down with that because I love adding my own seam allowance. Um, different areas of garments are easier to construct if you have different seam allowances so when they just chuck on a 5 8 everywhere even on necklines I'm like ah you know how hard it is to sew a princess seam with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance <laughs> you know so when I have the freedom and the opportunity to add my own I am super happy and that's why you saw me add different for this area for the side seams on areas I didn't add because I was going to finish with bias binding and you know that gives me a lot of freedom and I love that these patterns don't have it so thumbs up for no seam allowance <laughs> now regarding the language barrier there shouldn't really be if if you're uh, adventurous and like looking at pictures you can figure it out you can figure it out and you can learn what front back up and down and on the fold means or lining you know like I'm gonna pop all those words down in the description box <laughs> because I am not kidding you those few words were the only words I needed to know looking at the pattern pieces looking at the instructions to really really fully understand you know the, the pattern so that's good now I'm willing to try German patterns Italian like you name it I'm gonna go for it <laughs> because language really shouldn't be a barrier for us we are sewing Sewing is done the same everywhere, the seams are like, seams don't have language, sewing doesn't have language, you know? So that uh, that's my thought. <laughs> and we should be more open to accepting different coaches in sewing, the way pattern companies approach their instructions or their patterns or the way they class whether a pattern is, is for a beginner or is, an, you know, for an advanced sewist. This one for me, I would class it as an adventurous beginner. 
If you did it my way, I would say intermediate because bias binding is not easy to deal with and get a good, you know, nice finish. So here it is, black chiffon. You can see the one piece there has that tie and I've finished everything with bias binding, even the tips there. Those tips, I'm telling you, they were not easy to do. <laughs> I had to think about it, but it worked out good. So what I did was just bind all the hem first and then I started binding from the bottom there up. So there's like an intersection of bias tape there. And I finished the arm side like that, like you saw with that little square thing inside. I don't know if you can see, I think it's a really nice finish. I've got the seams pressed open. So I have it on. These are my colorful duet trousers with a blue cami. This is exactly how I would walk out to the street. <laughs> so my, my uh, doubt was where this tie was going to hit on me. And I'm happy it's quite low. I'm happy you can see the cami there. I'm happy it, it, there's, there's a V feature there that elongates my chest and has that slimming effect when you have like a larger bust, you know? And this is just loose and dangly. Now, if I made this in a double layer and lined, I would have still needed to wear something under because hello, <laughs> it's so open. It's not like, doesn't have a closure or anything. You know, so the sleeves are just grown on there. I think it's really nice. Um, you saw I did have to remove an inch from each side here. <laughs> it was quite a lot. And then the hips were perfectly fine. And that is just for the feet I want. It's still loose and flowy, but it's not a humongous box, you know? So it's just loose there, cropped, and um, this can go with a bunch of my clothes. Um, I wanna make these in all colors now. <laughs> okay, so that was my Paula top. I'm super happy I made it, happy I took the risk. And now um, there are other patterns from that company that I've been eyeing, same as from Cosette and I Am Patterns. Um, I'm just ready to take the plunge, take it as it comes and have fun with it. I think French designs can be super feminine or super boxy and like shapeless. So you just gotta pick, there's gonna be one, you know, that you're gonna like and I'm just gonna go for it, you know? <laughs> Tell me, is language a big barrier for you? Have you tried to sew from you know, companies you don't understand, you know, that there's no translation. Have you tried it? I have had good results and I'm just gonna keep going, you know, I'm not gonna limit myself to just English, uh, English patterns and their style of instruction. And the way English patterns are made and the instructions is totally different and that does not set my standard for how other cultures or, or, or countries or pattern companies have to provide you with their product, you know? At the end of the day, what I want is a really good drafted uh, pattern, that's all I want. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I will see you soon, bye. Old walls that I'm stuck inside I guess beauty sees what I can't find I didn't, no I didn't See it coming